What's going on guys, it's Brandon back here again, and I apologize beforehand, my voice is a little iffy and a little stuffed up, just maybe meandering around a cold area, so I'm going to do this as quick as I can, uh, late BFR, because I had work, game 48 against the Edmonton Oilers in Edmonton at 9pm on January 28th, ends up being a 7-3 win for Edmonton, Hawks dropped to 15-29-4, and uh, hit, sh- hit shots were 43-29 Edmonton, hits were 27-21 Chicago, faceoffs 39-29 Edmonton. On the power play, Chicago goes 1 for 3, Edmonton excuse me, goes 2 for 3. Morozik saves 36 out of 43, Campbell saves 25 out of 28, and then Matt Berlin saves 1 out of 1. We'll get into that. Fin- it was the final game before the All-Star break for the Hawks. Oilers were in the reverse retros. 11 forwards and 7 defensemen were out for the Oilers. Taze was in, Philip was out for the Hawks, and Taze was playing on the third line, which may be a foreshadowing of what is to come for his career. Uh, Stuart Skinner was a late scratch for Edmonton, so Matt Berlin is the emergency backup from the University of Alberta. He's the third string goaltender there. And um, let's get into the first period. Where Athanasiu has a break that, that's faltered early. Seth Jones is stopped. Kurashev's denied. Hawks have the early jump. Um, Nurse uh, should have had a trip and a, and a roughing, but at 15.03, it's a Chicago penalty to Seth Jones for interference. 23 seconds into the power play, it's an Edmonton goal to Tyson Berry. Sixth of the season from Nugent Hopkins and McDavid to make it 1-0. 4.55 then, it's an Edmonton penalty served by Costin for too many men, which would be killed. Derek Ryan would be stopped. And then we go to the second period, where everything happens. Yan Marks denied, and then at 14.35, Chicago ties the game with a breakaway goal. It's a great pass from Kane to Jason Dickinson, his seventh of the season from Kane and Kurashev, which make it 1-1. McDavid is then denied, and then at 13.56, it's a Chicago penalty to Mitchell for hooking. And just over a minute after that original Chicago goal, it's a Edmonton power play goal at 13.23 from Leon Dreisaitl, 29th of the season from McDavid and Nugent Hopkins to make it 2-1. Then at 10:21, Edmonton, it's an Edmonton penalty to Nurse for tripping, which would be killed. At 7:59, it's a Chicago and Edmonton penalty for fighting. It's Lafferty and Kulak that go off for after a big tussle. Uh, 14 seconds later, at 7:45, it's an Edmonton stuffing goal from Tyson Berry with his second of the game, seventh of the season from Hyman and Nurse to make it 3-1. And then, f- f- 57 seconds later, it's an, at 6.48, it's an Edmonton backhander goal. Fantastic move, Connor McDavid. 41st of the season, it, absolutely insane. 41 goals in 50 games for him. From Dreisaitl and Hyman to make it 4-1. So, sorry about that. I had to cough. Uh, icings were kept leading to goals, and then about a, little, about a minute and a half after the McDavid goal... Hyman has a break that's denied, but the the, uh, the play goes around, and at 5-12, it's an Edmonton deflection goal from Zach Hyman, 26 of the season, from McLeod and Nurse to make it 5-1. So three goals all in the span of a little over under a little over two and a half minutes. So all these goals, were, a lot of them were being caused by icing. The Hawks would dump the puck, the Oilers get the offensive zone draw, and they would just open fire, and they keep control, and they score. That's how they scored a lot of their goals in the game. 151, it's an Edmonton goal to Leon Dreisaitl, but it would be, be killed. Considered no goal for goaltender interference, so it should have been about 6-1 there. Then at 126, it's a Chicago penalty to Caleb Jones for holding, which would be killed. And we go to the third, as the Edmonton starts with 34 seconds of power play time. Uh, then at 1210, it's an Edmonton penalty to Pulley RV for hooking. And then at 1131, it's a Chicago deflection goal from Jonathan Tays on, on the power play. 14th of the season from Kane and Radish to make it 5-2. Evander Kane hits the post. And then off a turnover at 11:19, it's an Edmonton goal to Evander Kane. So about 12 seconds later, sixth of the season, from Drysaitel to make it 6-2. And then a minute and seven seconds later, it's originally no goal, but the horn eventually sounds at 8:12. It's an Edmonton def- it deflects off Seth Jones, who tries to keep it out, but he can't. It goes off him from Ryan McLeod, eighth of the season from Nurse to make it 7-2, and that's Morozik playing way out of his net as usual. So that makes the game 7-2. Two minutes and 59 seven seconds later, um, it's a Chicago 2-on-1, eventually to a breakaway goal, which from Taylor Radish, 14th of the season from Domi, makes it 7-3. Reese Johnson's denied, and then the emergency backup, Matt Berlin, who's the third string at University of, Alber- in, of Alberta in Calgary, that's where the school is, he goes in, he makes one save, and Edmonton wins the game, so great experience for Matt Berlin there. Hawks lose a, good ge- Hawks lose a game, that's good, because Anaheim and Columbus have started winning games which is good because we need them to get as high as they can, so the Hawks have the best chances. 
But that's all I have for you guys today. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to try to heal up now for this All-Star break. I'll try to make a few videos here and there. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.